I get shit done, I have fun, it's my time and I'm the one, I'm breaking through. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, if you're seeing it live, uh, it's another uh, episode of the Business Renovator, I'm Coach Phil, aka Phil Jokes. Um, today we're, uh, topic is CRM or not to CRM, that is the question. And I have a wonderful guest, a wonderful human being. I recently um, became a grandfather. It was always in him, but it only just showed up recently. Just last year. Um, maybe he'll talk about his little gift. But in the meantime, um, let's, let's have a listen to our sponsor. Welcome back. And the reason that's my sponsor, that's one of the, uh, that's the company I'm uh, affiliated with. I'm one of a couple of hundred uh, uh, business coaches around the globe. If you have a question for a business coach, perhaps time management, people, um, strategies for what to do to sell the business or exit the business or to change something about the business, turn it into a franchise or add another location or start another business. Uh, reach out to us and um, let's have a conversation. Ask us your question and see if we have an answer. If I don't have it, because I have a global network of a couple of hundred coaches around the world, uh, I'm sure one of us could address your concern and help you along your way. And at the end of the show, um, uh, I'll be, um, I have a gift for you as well. And I think my guest is Joe Norco will have a gift for you as well. So I've known this man for oh, at least half a dozen years. And how I met him was um, hanging out with a bunch of other coaches. And it turns out he has an eagle eye for details. Many times he's looked at my screen, looked at my CRM system and pointed out things that were blatantly obvious to people with his expertise. To me, I had a scotoma and didn't see it. So he's a very interesting dude. Uh, he likes photography. He's happily married. Uh, they have a couple of businesses that they run. His, one of his sons is involved with them. I don't know if Conrad, his grandson, will be joining him soon, but you never know. Let me bring up Joe Norcott. Hey, Joe, well, welcome to the show. Well, hello and good day, everyone. So, um, actually, your little sponsorship there was uh, interesting because People do want to make a lot of money, but they want a lot of free time. And uh, I think that's uh, really important, especially in this day and age. So uh, and one of those things sometimes is how do I make my life easier tracking my, you know, prospects, clients and so forth. And that's, well, you, I, you know what I like about you, Joe? You yes. Just, you just jump right into the meat of the topic today. <laughs> Well, you noticed how I kind of segued that in, you know, no socializing. Let's just get down to work. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So, yeah, all kidding aside, we, we we've had a few uh, fun moments over the years, and you know, one of the places where we really connected was um, in San Diego when you came to Focal Points Conference and talked about a particular CRM system. One actually, I still use today. And um, that's where we really, I think, gelled, wasn't it? It is. Uh, you know, basically, it was great to be invited by Focal Point to come and speak and uh, go over a CRM system for, for coaches and consultants and working with business people and, what, and also talking about how could it be an advantage to business owners. So. And, and you know, it's, it's been a, a, just such a treat working with me because I have such a love-hate 
relationship with the CRM system. You've heard me many times um, <laughs> in a state of frustration, and then you just point me in the right direction, and the frustration goes away permanently. Well, right, and I think the thing is, um, you know, for yourself, it's not your specialty to know all the ins and outs of of a software system because a lot of them have, you know, 500 different features and which one should work for me and what should happen. But I think the thing is, is uh, as you've experienced, my my look at things is uh, how do I make it happen? And also how do we simplify the process? So. Yeah, exactly. And uh, many times you simplified the process. Just recently we added a, a number of um, new cu clients, customers to the CRM system. So the, there's heavy lifting at the beginning, putting this all together. But once it's put together, the time saving uh, is amazing. Because, um, well, actually one of the things that we've done with mine is uh, in addition to adding the uh, recent uh, customers, we just added what, 75 of them and thereabouts. Yeah. Over the course of the last four weeks, I, and that wasn't because Joe was slow, it was because I was slow getting him the, the names and addresses and all the details. Go garbage in, garbage out. So Joe's always a stickler for me getting the details uh, as best I can, accurate uh, initially, um, so that he can import them and help me out, or at least tell me how to import them, because he doesn't have to do it all. He's taught me how to do much of it. Um, the other thing I was going to talk about with my particular CRM system, it's more than just a customer relationship management tool. Uh, I have autoresponders and I have a campaign program. And um, one of the things that's really cool for me is uh, we're, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that for you, Ray. That's a, Ray asked a great question. So because they asked, we, we're going to try and leave this not no specific brand, but Joe's an expert in a couple of them. Uh, Act is one. And the other one is Zoho. And I have uh, the Zoho One account, which is uh, an, they, when I met them uh, here a couple of years ago, they did a dog and pony show presentation across Canada to several of the major cities. And I was fortunate. I was living in one of the major cities. And um, they've created a, this platform as an operating system. And they have all these different apps that they put into it. So what I just talked about, the CRM system, the campaign, and the autoresponders, are apps that run under their operating system of Zoho One. Did I get that right, Joe? You did. So, so it's Zoho, Ray. It's Zoho. Yes. And uh, Zoho and, One particularly. And I'll I'll be happy to have a call with anyone about it. So yeah, well, that's one of the gifts. I mean, just because Joe's here, um, he loves talking about it. So if you want to ask a CRM coach a question or two, um, I'm sure he's available for about 15 minutes. Uh, or so, just yes. because you're on the show, just let him know that that you uh, heard about him on the business renovator, and he'll maybe he'll extend it to thirty minutes. I, I'm giving away your time. <laughs> All right, I'll extend it thirty minutes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so one of the things I use my campaign for is uh, what in, in my coaching practice, whether I'm working with salespeople, business owners, or entrepreneurs, I like to use something referred to as DISC. The reason I like that is it's a real powerful tool to help us build rapport with people quickly and uh, speak to them um, in a way that makes sense to them, not in a way that makes sense to me because it's not about me. It's about me serving them as best I can. And with the CRM system, I'm able to, I have a 52 session uh, campaign and in the marketing lingo for that is a drip campaign. It doesn't sound very, very nice, but it's an education based um resource and joe helped me set that up so now i know how to do a campaign and i can do campaigns for all sorts of things do you want to right. speak more about that yeah well basically um talking about what you did in specific is once the person has done gone through desk with you you now have a campaign of oh 30 40 emails that go out obviously not all in one day uh, but they are emails that help educate the person further on DISC and what they've learned from it from going through the experience, which, by the way, I've done and is very, very valuable. Uh, and it's also helped me understand uh, the types of people that I work with one-on-one -on -one, 
uh, to better understand the best way to approach working with them. Um, but putting that aside, uh, basically what Phil has done instead of having you just work with DISC is the idea that he's staying one in contact with you on a regular basis. He is also educating you further on what you've learned, where you're going and so on. And uh, Phil does a very good job of that with his, with his email campaign that he has for post-disc evaluation. Um, prior to that, the other things that we've got that we set up is the ability to just as simple as having a web form on your website or a landing page. And depending on what you're promoting, what you're offering, when that information comes in, instead of it coming to an email and now you've got to type it in somewhere, it's already preloaded into the into the CRM system. Um, again, this is all automated because at that point an automatic email goes out. Thank you very much for your interest. Here is a copy or here is the information. And then that email goes out. In the meantime, a task is assigned to you uh, to um, or to, to a sales rep within the company to be, you know, acting on it. And so that's kind of some of the things that it can do. I, I know we talked earlier uh, and you mentioned Zoho CRM is one item in ACT. Today, our, I think I'm trying to make our conversation a little more generic as to why should you have a CRM or not, as right. we talked about. So, you know, I mean, I could go into details on either one of those CRMs as well as others that I've worked with, the other Salesforce or gold mine or whatever. But the thing is, um, I think it's important that you take a look at what are your processes? What are your needs? When I meet with a client, a potential client, I have what I call a CRM discovery session. I've got the owner in the room, the head of sales. If there is a customer service, they're in the room, um, even head of manufacturing. Uh, if that's the case or production. Um, why? Because this all affects all of them in that company. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's all about the process and what do they want to know? I know we're all used to using something like an outlook uh, where we get our emails in and we keep the list of our contacts in there. And, you know, we try putting things into the calendar, but it's like, Oh, you know, I know, I think I got to call him next Tuesday. Well, this is, and, and, you know, and then somebody in sales, somebody else in management's asking you, what are you doing with ABC company? Well, the idea of a CRM is to help you track better what you're doing, follow up quicker versus your competition, who now most are using some kind of a CRM and um, basically uh, having a history of what you have done, said, emailed, you know, what your phone call was about and so forth. And it's not hard to use uh, when it's set up properly and you're trained on it, which is the other thing I do with my clients. The biggest thing is they need to be trained on how to use it. It's not like anything else, even in Outlook, winging it. So. So good. Uh, you, you brought up the, uh, the subject matter of CM or not to CRM. And I went off on a tangent of mine about what, what it could do in a, I apologize for taking us off track. So I'm going to bring us back. So CRM or not to CRM. And some of the things you've talked about address some of the advantages of a CRM system. And um, I mean, you, a CRM system can be as simple as a spreadsheet with rows and columns. And in there, you can put notes, uh, addresses, email addresses, all the contact information. And one of the downsides to that is that it's not automated as far as I know. Uh, I have a business partner who has developed uh, many applications that started out in a spreadsheet and turned it into a, an app. And one of the apps he did that for me for is a piece of software I have. So don't get hung up on uh, on whether it needs to be uh, a spreadsheet or if it needs to be uh, a system that's already done for you. If you can find a system that's already done for you, it does become um, a time saver and a resource so that while the campaign uh, was set up and is it's set up once, anytime I bring on somebody for um, 
disk and I want them to stay in, stay. Um, I want the content to stay top of mind to give them educational snippets. And it reminds them that I, that I'm still around and they're getting value from it. And when I've done that, I've had people reach back to me and ask if I help in other areas. So that's kind of beyond the scope of the CRM, but that's one thing that CRM could drive you to, right? Right. Well, it is. I don't want to say it's so much beyond it, but when you've automated it that way, when you put things in, now you're constantly in front of them and they, like you said, they'll come back to you for other things that could be, that you could offer to them. Okay. I, I think the biggest thing here is um, you end up being more uh, efficient, understanding uh, specific needs of your your client or your prospect you're working you know talking to and that you know how to more quickly work with them because you have a history of what they've said done what their needs are it's in there instead yeah. of you trying to I mean, remember your little gray cells get them going in your head so. well there's a couple of things there as we get older uh we we have so much more content and information in our mind and it's not that we don't remember it we just our recalls a little bit slower. And one of the things the CRM system can do, if you put, take the time to put the notes in it, uh, it can relieve s some of the uh, volume of data that's in your head and helps right. you stay relevant and on point with the people you're wanting to serve and help. Right. And you have the ability to know what they've purchased from you in the past products or services, and you identify them and say, well, you know, I'm offering a new service or I have this other product that goes with that pr a product they purchased. So now you can look into upselling, cross-selling because you have them automated right in there, listed, ready to go. You know who to, to go after. So, And it may not always to be to sell them a product or service. It might be to um, just communicate to them about something about them. If you take the Harvey McKay approach to customer relationship management. He has a form called the 66, Harvey McKay 66. And in there, he had all of his salespeople um, get all of the um, answers to all of those questions as fast as possible. And when it, what it ended up doing was it supported uh, um, a quote that I really am a big fan of. And it all ties into DISC and other things. Can you see that, Joe? Sure can. Would you read it out for me? Sure. Adaptability. No one cares about you until they know how much you care about them. And having a CRM system allows you to, to do that is to um, show people that you've, you've paid attention to what they're, uh, they're asking or what they're doing or what's important to them. Right. Right. And like you said, it's not always to connect with them, to sell them something. No. You could have a bi-monthly newsletter that you send out information um, just as long as you're in contact with them. If you're not talking to them for six months to a year, they're going to forget you. It's the number one reason people go move on to someone else who can offer the same services you have because they forget. Well, it's happened, um, Steve. If you, if, you don't, well, if you don't show people how much you care, they think you don't care, even though you probably right. do, but you're just not, you think you do, but you're not demonstrating it. Right. I mean, it also doesn't have to be all, you know, we'll go down this road a little bit further here on a newsletter, but the newsletter can have tidbits in it, not just about product, um, but also things like some personal things about you and your company, your sales, your team. Um, Actually, I think of one client, they're in the, uh, you know, they're in the silver and gold, you know, refining business. And um, they had this, they had the sales rep who kind of looked like a Bobby Knight. And when, you know, the, the college basketball coach from years ago, and um, they went to a trade show. And he was the type of guy that likes to meet people and, you know, he's outgoing and I don't know, somehow he got a picture of himself with some women. Um, and it was kind of funny the way it happened. And so they featured him going, so we went to the jewelry trade show and look who we met there, Bobby Knight. And it was just a picture of him. And people were like, oh my God, you're right. He looks like him. And you get comments back. Um, 
we've done things in our newsletters where we've sent out things like, um, you know, Dolores likes to bake and likes to make cakes. So one Thanksgiving, we showed a cake that it was a turkey made out of a cake and people couldn't believe it. Also, we have pictures of ourselves meeting people, um, very popular people and you know, standing next to them and getting a photo of them and so forth when we've gone to shows and things. So it's interesting, some of the things you get. Um, but uh, one more little story, the funniest one we had was Magnus for Magnuson. Dolores and I are on vacation up in New Hampshire and they have their annual, there was this big, you know, lifting program, um, forgetting the name of the theme of it, but Magnus for Magnuson was there um, to overlook the competition and rate them and all that. And I said to Dolores, see if he'll take your picture. And you realize this is one of these guys that would turn around and drag a truck, okay, on ESPN. So he gets a picture, she goes over there and he's like, oh, sure. And he's like from, you know, wherever he was from, the Nordic or something. And uh, he grabs her by the, you know, puts his arm around her. And I looked at Dolores and I was like, okay, she's going to get crushed any second. <laughs> but we took the picture and everybody, now Dolores is a CPA and people were like, how do you know that Magnus for Magnuson? And so it was really funny, but it attracted people to the newsletter. And um, we were getting email responses and believe it or not, we picked up some business out of it. So, um, but how did we do it? Because we had a CRM where we could automate it and put it together and send it out. And we send it what out you, a certain time of day and off it goes. So, yeah, you can schedule it. So um, what it supports is, and we're not going to do a deep dive in this. I'm looking at the time there, but people buy it when they have a problem that they right. want to solve, not when we have a mortgage payment to pay. It's really about no one cares about you until they know how much you care about them. And the CRM system is a way for you to stay in touch with people uh, to be relevant right. in a variety of different ways, newsletters, uh, campaigns. Um, Ron Goodwin here has another idea. <coughs> and it's, it's a way to communicate with all of the things that are going on. We've got uh, social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, clubhouse, uh, landline, cell phone, emails, uh, a wide variety of ways of communicating. And the CRM system can help you remember how you started the conversation. You could put right. it into your CRM system to remember that that's their text. If that's their preference to how to communicate, you could do that as well. Um, yep. Ron saying our CRM system links to customers' websites. Amazing how many times we mention something on their website and they ask, how do we know that? Isn't that interesting? Yep, yep. You, do, you can do that. And then, um, you know, you're, you know information about them when you're talking to them. And uh, you also know information about people who've come to your site or when you've sent an email, what did they link, what did they click on in the links of the email that based on that, you can then say, well, they clicked on looking at product A or service A and now there's a potential so now we can put them into something else yeah another exactly. follow-up um, but it is all about working with people and it, also it's important to point out too that it's building a relationship with that well that's that. why it's called a crm system customer right. relationship management that's what it's all about and if you yep. don't manage the relationship you won't have any business to manage right right speaking. And as for management, it's all about learning where's the sales team at? Do we have to order materials to get a production, to get ready for production because there's a big deal coming down? Um, and uh, for customer service and, and everybody in house, it's a matter of tracking uh, calls for support and that the salesman knows there's an issue or had been an issue and he doesn't turn around and walk in the door and get his head chewed off because he didn't know what was going on. So, um, so there's all that. The, the other thing is nowadays, uh, you know, obviously because of the pandemic, we've had people at home. So a cloud-based product is very important. Just by coincidence, I have a client that I set it all up, trained them and so forth uh, in January of 2020. And we were starting to hear about this thing. Um, they had a close down in March. 
they didn't open up until mid June again, based on where we live, they have, did everything in phases. And by that point, I had already worked with them about doing all their quoting online with the CRM system and being able to now, they can even invoice from it through there to their accounting. But basically um, what happened in this case was they were getting quotes from, these are business, they're business to business um, and they were getting you know requests for quotes and a couple of them told you know we did be honest with you we called a couple of competitors and they've told us they can't do anything until they can get back into the office so they could do everything online from their homes and basically when they reopened in june um, they had about a million dollars worth of work and they brought everybody back on into the you know into the company to do start doing all the work and the clients that they normally do work for during the summertime because it relates to manufacturing and distribution uh, when they have a lot of their holidays basically they told them, if you need us tell us now we're scheduling out and they had a great year even though they were closed for about three months so it's all about you know planning it out knowing how to the best way to resolve issues for your company and providing the contact with you know the best service and the best you know on top being on top of what they need and that's what it is um, and it does and to be honest with you that client is only four users but i've got another client that's 22 users and they're worldwide so we have in there again the same kind of a setup but simplified just like on the others and um, they're able to know what they're going to need for orders. They're in the medical industry, working with hospitals, clinics, and so forth. And um, now they're going to be using field service management with it as well. Uh, besides being able to do their quotes and then invoicing and everything else. So, but that's all, that's what it's about. Being able to provide the services and being able to work with it. I can see, Phil, you're contemplating over there. Yeah, I was going to just bring your website back on uh, so people can see where they can get all of you. Okay. And um, it's uh, btne.com. Hang on, watch this. I can bring it up. Right there. there. That's this particular website. Um, it's the one way to get a hold of him. Um, he does have a landing page, but it's quite long. He has a digital book on digital marketing hang on i'm going to bring it up here buddy there it is right there the digital acceleration strategy this is your gift if you reach out to joe uh probably the best place to go find him is at uh, btne.com and just let him know that you watched or heard about the the uh digital acceleration strategy book that he's written um and ask him for it in a subject line right. and, and go from there that would be the right. simplest way because the other one's really quite long. Northcottbusinessgrowth.com forward slash digital book. Well, I guess I can bring that up. It's your choice. Either way, he's happy to help you out. Right. And one, one other way to do it, too, is uh, up on Facebook. Go to my uh, page, Bigger Slice of Business. There's another way to go. And uh, you'll see, you should see a link in there, too. Take you right there. Oh, you think. And uh, he lives really close to um, my buddy... Ron, who was talking about CRM systems, you're both in and around the same kind of area. Right. Yeah. Uh, when I, yeah, that's another, I, I was going to say when Ron walks back to his house, sounds like the waves are coming in, but it's just the cars going by. It's ways camera picks it up. Um, yeah. So the digital acceleration strategy book by the one and only Joseph bracket, Joe Norcott. That's right. One last, you got one last nugget you would suggest or recommend real quick in 30 seconds or less. Think about how you want to make you make yourself more efficient this year. Uh, will CRM work for your business? And the idea in the long run is that it's running running for you, doing what you need to generate new leads. And um, you're able to take a little more time off personal. Because of Great it. advice. Systematize your business and a CRM system might be the, one of the tools that you could look at. And Joe, thank you for being a guest on the Business Renovator. I appreciate your knowledge and wisdom. And he has an eagle eye for details, let me tell you. 
Well, thank you, Phil, for having me on. It's been a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon, Joe. Okay. Well, I hope you got one or two or three or maybe a dozen ideas out of this. But the uh, getting an idea and not acting on it is a waste of time. Like un unapplied knowledge is useless. So um, if you don't have a CRM system, um, maybe now is the time to, to look and consider getting one. And if you um, are looking for some help and helping you to decide what to do, Joe is your guy. You've got his information and he'd be happy to address any of your questions that you may have. If you uh, liked what this is about, remember on the replay, hashtag replay, let us know that you uh, saw this later and tell us where you're from. That would be cool. And if you also liked it uh, and know of somebody that has a message that you feel would be of interest to the world, because this goes out through uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and you just never know when that person you introduce to the business renovator, his message gets out there and somebody his life has improved, maybe just a small, maybe big, who knows, but you could be one of the people that had influence on that. With that in mind, I'm going to wrap up the show and uh, see you next time on The Business Renovator. I get shit done, I have fun, it's my time and I'm the one, I'm breaking